On the road to the Final Four, we join you from Jacksonville in action from the East Region. The 14th seed, the Yale Bulldogs, matched up with the number three seed, the LSU Tigers. Coming up here in Jacksonville, Maryland and Belmont, the survivor of that one, will meet the winner of this one. And welcome everybody, Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle, Jamie Erdahl joins us as well. The madness is underway and a cloud of controversy for LSU opening up this tournament, Jimmy. Their head coach, Will Wade, he is suspended indefinitely by the school. Uh, there is a report of FBI wiretaps in connection to illegal benefits for recruits. Jamie will have more on that coming up. Tony Benford steps in as the interim coach for LSU. And this is what they're dealing with at the start of the tournament. And clearly, I and this is a distraction for the team and the university. There's no question about that. But my belief is that this young group will use it as a rallying cry. They're very, very close bunch of guys as far as the teammates are concerned. And I just think they'll come out. Once they get on the court, they'll forget about it. They've got a big challenge. Yes. They're taking on Yale, the champions of the Ivy League, and a player that's garnering a lot of attention, Mie Oni, NBA attention, Jimmy. Yeah, very talented player in terms of mixing it up a lot. He can shoot the ball from the outside. Very good at driving towards the basket, though, and he's a leader for this team, and he'll make things happen with a lot of different passes also. Take a look at the starting lineups for Yale. Alex Copeland. There is Oni, Phils, Bruner, and Blake Reynolds for LSU, Tremont Waters, who is from New Haven, Connecticut. So he's very familiar with this Yale program. Skylar Mays, Marlon Taylor, Nas Reed, and Cavell Big B Williams. Tony Benford stepping in. He has been in contact with Will Wade in preparation for this game. He is the interim coach, former head coach at North Texas, and James Jones, the longest tenured coach in the Ivy League, 20th season at Yale. This is a confident group. Our officiating crew, Chris Rastatter, Nathan Farrell, and Vlad Voyard Tadal. The big dance. We are underway. The NCAA tournament here in Jacksonville, and LSU controls the tip. Yeah, nothing like the big dance starting, too, with teams that are very quick going up and down the floor. Big B. Williams is fouled on the interior 15 seconds into the game. It looked like Phils was down low, a mismatch, and they went right after him underneath the basket to start. It is Trey Phils, very good defender for this Bulldog squad. And Big B. Williams going to the free throw line, shoots it at 59%. He does have tournament experience. Went to the Final Four as a member of the Oregon Ducks. And LSU on the board. Champions of the SEC regular season. But they lost in the quarterfinals of the conference tournament. Heartbreaking loss to Florida. And I had an interesting start here with LSU. Do you see anybody on the free throw line there nope. ready for an offensive rebound? He comes up as that, you mentioned, that type of free throw shooter, 59%. He buries both of them to start. LSU, 22nd NCAA tournament appearance. Their first since 2015. They lost to NC State in the first round, 66-65. Good back door. And it's Copeland. He couldn't finish. Big B. Williams was lurking around the rim. It's an LSU team that likes to get out defensively also. Nine steals per game, so those backdoor opportunities should present themselves. Step back, Waters, bottom. It's a long two-pointer for Tremont Waters. That's obviously the team leader. When he is playing well, this is a different type of LSU team. So we'll keep an eye on him this afternoon to see what type of game he has. Good start for him. Could we have a track meet between these two teams? Yeah, could very well. They both average 81 points a game, and they don't turn the basketball over. Their numbers are identical at 81 points per game and 13 turnovers. So who controls the tempo? Step back three. Bruner misses on a rainbow delivery, and the rebound snatched by Reed. LSU running. Reed will clear. This is an LSU team that comes in averaging 81.4 points per game. That is 23rd in the nation. Yale is right behind them, 24th at just over 81. And at times with their half court, they use a lot of pick and roll sets. The guards are very good off the bounce. Shot clock winding down. Waters one on one with Copeland. Fires. Rims out. Rebounded by Reynolds. See that quick look down the other end of the floor just then to see what the shot clock was telling him. Trying to get on the board. Reynolds steps into it. Off the back of the iron from three-point territory. And the rebound controlled by the lengthy Marlon Taylor for LSU. And I think it's so important that Yale gets a, an early bucket. Don't get this thing out of control early. We see LSU go up something like 8 or 10 to 0. 
Find some confidence at the offense. Yale is 0 of 3 from the field. Reed can stroke it. It's a 3. Yeah, surprising it's 6-10. Only a freshman shoots it at 37% from out. Side. So what he does too, Ian, is he brings you out on the floor, and that opens up the driving lane. He is a major talent. Size and strength, athletic ability. Bruner, no. Long rebound, Copeland. Early in this game, but this is a big possession for them to get on the board. Reynolds, D9! Big B Williams, the rejection for LSU. A good run out here too by him. And it's caught by Big B Williams for the deuce. And just like that, LSU out to a 9-0 lead. Early timeout called by Yale. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the one they have to go with. At 9-0, you must do that. That's one of the fears that you have a team like LSU that's good defensively. Watch them bust down the middle of the floor, which they're very good at for the finish. Coke is introducing new orange vanilla Coke. It's orange and vanilla and Coke and delicious. You'll love it. Early stages here in Jacksonville. Defensively, LSU has stood out here against Yale. Well, yeah, trying to bait you to go to the basket. Copeland thinks he has one right there. He just doesn't get it to finish. And there's that big step across, too, by Bigby Williams. That's going to trigger some opportunities going down the other end of the floor. But this Yale team passes the ball very well. I would expect just what they're doing now. Get a lot of guys moving, get a lot of touches, keep that ball moving to get a good shot. They are 0-5 from the field. Just over three minutes gone by. Copeland ducks in and gets the deuce. Boy, a pretty play from the standpoint of the patience. You notice how he pump faked a couple of times. He knew the big guy was back there waiting for him and just kind of stayed and waited to get one to go down. Most outstanding player of the Ivy League tournament. Big finish! Marlon Taylor on a pretty setup by Tremont Waters. One of the things Waters will do so well, he'll break you down off the dribble and look to make things happen and make life easy for his teammates. Coldwin's got Mays defensively. Deep one from Oni, bottom, it's a three. Yeah, it's amazing when you get one shot to go down, sometimes it's contagious. Now they have to figure out a way to stop, how to stop LSU. Waters the penetration, gets to the rim, but doesn't get the roll. Knocked around, Waters the wraparound feed. And a foul call, Taylor is going to the free throw line. And that's an extended possession for LSU based on the fact that Yale couldn't rebound on the defensive end. Yeah, look at Waters. He knows how to set up his teammates. Nice little dish by Taylor. And here just stepping up a little outside shot. Ioni. And the first foul on Blake Reynolds will send Marlon Taylor, Jr. from Mount Vernon, New York. 67% free throw shooter at the line. Well, for James Jones, you know, we talked about this season for Yale, he said they hit a little bit of a skid, the dog days in the conference schedule, and then they were just looking to outscore people, but there was a rededication on defense. They had a heart-to-heart -heart as a team, and the squad responded. Yeah, and it's good they did because they're, they're up against a fast-paced, offensive-minded team also that does play some tough defense at the same time with their steals numbers. Reynolds, the floater, no. Rebound, Nas Reed is a man in there. And Bigby Williams, a man defensively, too. That's the reason he had to throw up a floater. Waters off the shake and bake. Oh, little step. Reed travels. Or should I say a big step for him? <laughs> <laughs> really big step. 13-5, LSU leads Yale. First half in Jacksonville. Back here in the East region, let's bring in the third member of our crew and Jamie Erdahl. We touched on the controversy surrounding LSU basketball that became public back on February 25th, Ian, when a Yahoo Sports report stated that head coach Will Wade was found on a 2017 FBI wiretap discussing payment for then recruit Javante Smart. The head coach does remain suspended indefinitely, but Smart, he was held out of one SEC tournament game. He was reinstated to play. It sounds like Will Wade has stayed in touch with his staff, his players, Players, but he is back in Baton Rouge watching these Tigers play now. And the challenge, obviously, for LSU is keeping that off to the side. So far, so good. 
Outside shot from Azar Swain. He cans it for three. Right off the bench, before you even have a chance to say that he shoots 70% of his shots come from the three-point stripe. They find them in a broken play, and they get an open look out of it to keep this score relatively close. Atkinson is also in for Yale. It's 13-8 LSU. Mays can't answer. Uncontested rebound to Oni. Now watch the pace now. I mean, they like to go up and down, but keep in mind again, they will take quick shots, and that might have been a little too quick in the set. Oni missed it. Cleared by Bigby Williams and Javante Smart, who Jamie just mentioned, is in there and he hits the floater. Now he's a driver of the tempo for them, too. When he comes in, he changes the tempo. He'll pick them up. They slide Waters over to the two spot. Oni glides oh. to the rim, swatted. Bigby Williams negates him. So anytime you put it down, look at this. He puts it on the floor from way out. So he kind of, we talk about telegraphing a pass. This is called a telegraph drive to the basket. If you have a big guy back there just waiting at 6'11", he's going to eat that up. Elliot Williams, Darius Days are in for LSU. It's 15-8, Tigers. Too high. Tried to hit Atkinson along the baseline. They turned it over for the first time. First round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins tomorrow at noon, ESPN2 and the ESPN app. For more info on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. The drive by Mays and the lay-in. Skyler Mays, combo guard. He was a high school point guard, but obviously with Tremont Waters there, Mays has been a little bit more off the ball, but He's a secondary ball handler for LSU. Only carries a little over a 4.0 GPA, too. Jealous? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oni, no look. Working around the perimeter. Swain. Oh, that's oh. from deep. Azar Swain from downtown. And if ever Yale needed somebody to give them a little life from long distance. Swain can score in bunches. That pass was not intended for days, but it ended up in his hands, and he missed the three. Copeland with a head of steam. Pull up, pop. Rims out. Even though it's been going in favor of LSU so far, Yale is very, very confident. Even though they know going to the basket, they got to keep an eye out. Smart the penetration. A little double shot off the rim threw everybody's timing off just then. And it's rebounded by Emmett Williams for the clear LSU. Waters matched up with Copeland out front. Talk about the speed on the guard play, but this is a big front line, too, even off the bench. The spin by Mays and way off. Swain the board for Yale. 17-11, LSU leads it. Yeah, Swain runs the point, secondary point. Slides Copeland, there comes a turnover our way. Not quite. I was staying in there for that one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were moving. A little bit. But here's the kick out. Look at the release. Got players, two guys within striking distance. Waters runs by him on the right side, avoids the foul, but real good lift off the bench. Reynolds back in for Yale. And Bruner heads to the bench for the Bulldogs. Little gun shy going to the basket so far in terms of the blocks that LSU has had. So you either make a decision we're going to go perimeter or we're going to continue to challenge and throw our bodies at somebody's chest on the way to the basket. That's Swain the was fouled in three-point territory by Waters. So Waters did his homework. He knows that Swain shoots that, as I mentioned, 70% of his shots from three. So he trails on this play. You'll see him come around. But where is he? He's on the left side, and he's trying to reach across to get a right-hand shooter to stop him from shooting the basketball. So you're better off running in front of the guy and just putting a hand up. Azar Swain, 66% shooter. True TV invites you to experience the most important firehouse comedy of the year. Watch the series premiere of Tacoma FD next Thursday, 10.30, 9.30 Central on True TV. Azar Swain is a sophomore, high school football star, along with his basketball prowess at the Rivers School. He's actually the all-time touchdowns leader in his high school's history. Gatorade Player of the Year in Massachusetts as a basketball player in his senior season out of Brockton, Mass., this is a Yale team, Jimmy, that put up 97 points against Harvard in the Ivy League Tournament Championship oh, game. They'll, they'll go with you. There's no question about it. you got to remember that the style that LSU likes to play is exactly the same. And the conferences 
quite clearly were a little bit different night in and night out from a competition standpoint. So that gives LSU a favorite, a little bit of an edge going into the game. Waters looks for an opening, takes it, and banks it in. Tremont Waters has a deep repertoire of runners and floaters and pull-up jumpers. Yeah, all SEC first-team player this year, but you're right. And his hesitation on top of that, he really baits you into locking up defensively and knows when to go against you. Mie Oni, the Ivy League Player of the Year. Ten to shoot. Twelve minutes to play, first half. Nowhere to go. Oni whips it to the perimeter. Wow, defended and a foul. Copeland, he got hit and will shoot a pair. Watch the little bit of the hesitation, and then he knows enough to keep that ball far away on the right to lay it up off the glass. Watch your sports news without the yelling and fake debates. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 network for nonstop tournament highlights and picks. Download the CBS Sports app today. Our tournament summary, ACC, three number one seeds, Duke, Virginia, North Carolina, second time that's happened in tournament history, the Big East in 2009. SEC, seven bids tied for the second most of any conference. And the Ivy League trying to improve on that all-time tournament record. Yale did get a win in the 2016 NCAA tournament. As a 12 seed, they upset Baylor in Providence and then lost to Duke in the is that even though the bigs for LSU haven't been posting up and scoring, they have a 10-2 lead against James Jones's team in the paint. So one of the things I think at the other end, though, that the Yale team is looking for shot blockers. There's three shot blocks already against them, but now all of a sudden I sense that they're going into the lane looking for somebody to block a shot. You got to wipe that out of your mind and just play aggressive basketball. Jimmy Yale went 44 of 46 at the free throw line during the Ivy League tournament. That's the one thing that has stood out about this Bulldog squad. They're not going to beat themselves if LSU's going to win this game. They're going to have to go out and earn it. And it's a good combination to go with limited turnovers, too, so they give themselves a chance. Oh, pretty ball fake. Smart did not see Oni. He knocked it away. Break opportunity. Pull up is there for Copeland. They had that opportunity because Atkinson ran the floor. A terrific save. A couple of things happened just then in terms of Copeland getting that ball off the floor at the other end of the floor real fast, and then all of a sudden the lanes are starting to open up. Copeland now with six points. Yale has cut it to two. Entry. Williams. Fake. Wow. Oh, he banks in a baby hook. <laughs> a little baby hook. That was a... A little strong on the baby hook just then. Emmett Williams, the freshman from Fort Myers, Florida, gets on the board. 21-17, LSU. Working around the perimeter. Copeland plays under control. Off the spin. Ducks in. Missed it on the floater. Long rebound for Reynolds. Pretty ball fake. Look oh, at this. Wow. Wow. Copeland shooting that from the state of Georgia. And it's off the mark. Azar Swain with a miss. Tells you something about his range, though, and the confidence that they're playing with from the outside so far. Wow. Spin by Reed. Knocked away. Out of bounds, and Yale will take over. So the one thing that's passed is defensively, they close on you very quickly. Their bigs have an opportunity to run down the floor. So very, very strong team, I think, LSU for both the perimeter and also an inside play. And then here's your little favorite jump hook. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've mentioned this, LSU in the paint. They led the SEC in that category, ninth in the country. That's the way to attack it. And a foul called Atkinson, got the feed from Oni. And he will head to the free throw line. Big B Williams was waiting for him on the inside and picks up his first. So Paul Atkinson Jr., sophomore from West Palm Beach, Florida, and a 64% shooter at the strike. Yeah, and playing well the last three games for them, which is important. But that was a nice Yale set just then. A little back door on the left side. You cut to the basket, you bring people to you and get rid of it. So I think what you'll see is a little bit more of that. I think just be a touch patient because you have to keep testing the waters here. You can't go under, you can't just rely on your perimeter shooting, even though Yale shoots it very, very well from the three-point line. Atkinson won a state title at Westminster Academy. 
And the early part of this game, the first three minutes really tilted in the favor of LSU. And now all of a sudden you look at it, it's a two-point game. So you have to credit Yale for hanging in there and playing smart and just being aggressive at certain times. 11-4 run up wow. top, catch and delivery. Big B Williams as Waters floated the pass up high where only Big B Williams could yeah, get it. No, you're absolutely right. He just floated it and knew who his, who his receiver was on that play. And a steal by Waters. It's a race to the rim. Waters shovels. Oh, oh man! Major rack attack by Nas Reed. <laughs> the McDonald's All-American flying through the air for LSU. And using all 6'10 of the 250-pound frame, really going after that rim. Deep one. Oni grazes the rim and four white jerseys in the area for the rebound. And the ball hits the floor, too. Another sign that nobody on the glass for Yale. Pedal to the metal. Waters is fouled. Two free throws for Tremont Waters. So here's a guy who's lost 30 pounds. And watch him run the floor and finish it off. My goodness. We may see a better dunk in the tournament, but not as one so emphatic as that on the drive. Water shoots it at 79%. There was a time, Jimmy, where Yale thought they were in the mix for Tremont Waters. Because he's local, he attended camps that James Jones would have, Yale basketball camps, starting in the seventh grade. And then Waters, the reputation began to build nationally. He originally committed to Georgetown. John Thompson III was let go. That reopened his recruitment, and he ended up at LSU. More from Jamie. Well, I spoke with his parents about that decision-making process, and while the Yale gym was about a mile and a half from their home, and for, for a moment as a family, they would have wanted Tremont to go to Yale just to keep him in their backyard. They knew he needed that greater life experience, and now they're sitting behind me with all LSU gear on. And a bucket on the interior with Jordan Bruner cutting the LSU lead to six. And it's going the other way. Nas Reed setting the screen out front. I would tag that one on Waters just then in terms of leaving a little too fast before his big guy got set up. Tony Benford, an engaging guy yesterday in the conversations we had, but just a little too fast with Waters. But boy, is he having a terrific second season, similar to the numbers he put up last year. His mom, Vanessa, his dad, Ed, sitting right behind the LSU bench. Go with it. No. Bruner. The block for Big B Williams. Bruner gets it back. Shooting practice, Reynolds. Side rim on a three. Quick leak out. Uh, Mays with contact. And yeah, nice help defensively by Yale. Kick it. Mays lets it fly. It's a three. See, that's where Waters' decisions become so important. He's very good at it. You have to protect the drive to the basket, and it just basically keeps the perimeter defense defenders leaning towards him. Drive and kick. Bruner rims out on a triple, and Phils could not grab the rebound. It's 30 to 21. LSU can they bring the lead to double figures here. Reed on a diagonal kick. They work with Reed. The fade. No. Good hands just then too. Bruner getting his hand on it, just enough to throw that shot off by Reed. Yale is 3 of 10 on two-point tries. They're 3 of 10 on three-point tries. 9-2 LSU run. Yeah, just a little stagnant on this possession. He throws it out of bounds because Phil's looked the other way. And a rare mistake by this Yale squad. That's three turnovers now for the Bulldogs. Tremont Waters, folks, among the LSU fans, who like what they see early. 7, 23 to go, first half. It's a nine-point lead for the Tigers. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Experian. Introducing Experian Boost. Buffalo Wild Wings. Get here for March Madness. And by State Bar. Talk to an agent today at 1-800-STATE-BAR. Back here at Jacksonville, LSU, the number three seed in the East, leading 14th seed at Yale, 30 to 21. And our game summary 
Three-point shooting, Yale is three of 11 in the points in the paint, Jimmy. LSU controlling it so far. Yeah, 16 to 10 and defensively controlling it also with the three blocks. And you know, you take a look at Reed going to the basket, scaring everybody on that particular drive, but he's a real mismatch problem. He can blend it inside and out. A little different look right now. 1-3-1 one, one look by Yale. Little, they will trap to the corners occasionally. Go up top. Catch. Big B Williams. The flip. Tip in. Off the rim. Big B Williams again getting a chance, and this time he's going to the free throw line. So three opportunities at the bucket for Cavell Big B Williams, native of London. And Bruner picks up the personal. This season, NCAA coaches and Infinity are taking a timeout to fight cancer. With Infinity's $1 million donation to the American Cancer Society, this is an Infinity timeout for the win. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com. Big B. Williams, a cousin of former heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis. And he just missed on a pair. But be nice to him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to be nice either way, but <laughs> be very that's nice. an added layer. Be very nice to him. Huge fan of Lennox's, by the way. Let's get that out there in the open. <laughs> we don't want any problems over here. Reynolds a three. Rebound. Oh, what an effort. Jordan Bruner. The athletic do-it-all performer for Yale, good size at 6'9", 205 from Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, and that's a timeout set, too. I mean, they knew where the shot was coming from. Waters hits the teardrop. Just so tricky with the basketball. Fills that time trying to stay in front of him. He goes to his left, shoots it with his right. Eight points. He's the high scorer, Tremont Waters. And it's 32-23, LSU. Corner pop fills. Off the mark. And Reed with the board. Yeah, just can't get anything going on the offensive glass. LSU gets into a set with Taylor. Waters got fills the lean, goes behind the back. The initial receiver wasn't there, but Reed was for LSU. We are under six minutes to play, first half. Smart the pirouette. Good catch in traffic. Whoa. Reed. Missed it on the fadeaway. Snatched by Big B Williams. Uh, is he having a real good 15 minutes of basketball for LSU? Second chance opportunity for the Tigers. Three offensive rebounds for him. Uh-oh. Look out. Big B Williams, the flush. It's a 13-4 extended run for LSU. Yeah, one of the downsides with Yale is we've talked about how they score and they can go up and down the floor, but one of the negatives is that they give up a lot of points also. They've got their largest lead. Oney's been quiet, protecting the fade. No. And rebound to Reynolds as Big B. Williams got a piece of it. I think you go back to spreading the floor and run a backdoor cut if you can. Oh, Copeland splits defenders, and it rims out. Reed knocks it over to his teammate. It just seems like on every miss underneath for Yale, there's just too many taller players on the floor for LSU. No rush now for LSU. They've got an 11-point lead. This team was picked to finish sixth in the preseason SEC poll and won the regular season title. Got the pass. Line pass by Waters. It was intercepted. Here comes Oni in the open floor. Gives it up. Layup goes, and it's Phils. And a nice decision there by Oni, too. He can handle the basketball. One of the things he does very well, pushes it in transition. That was a great example of Yale taking advantage of a mistake and going the other way. Trey Phils, the son of the late Bobby Phils, former NBA standout. 34-25, Tigers. Opportunity read. They send a second man there, Reynolds. Shot clock winding down. Waters has to make it happen. With a step back, Jay, he cans it. Tremont Waters on target. And you just mentioned the name Phils. Defensively, you can't knock him for what he just did just then. That was a brilliant shot by Waters with the step away. Just a little bit of space on oh. that step away. And he's got 11 points. First player into double figures. Oney gives it up. Phils offers it up. And it's rebounded by Smart on the outside. Always looking to run and Yale with some pretty good transition defense out of their balanced offense. Reed, a threat from there. Reynolds prepared defensively. Waters had a notion. Understands, though, that they're up 12. Good time not to shoot that long-range shot. Waters has great feel. 
Work it around. Waters, six to shoot. Oh, they keep the ball hopping at times. Waters, step back, long two. Way off, never hit the rim. And that's gonna be the question now. Did it graze? Vlad Voyar Tadal is heading over to talk to his fellow official. Waters has it stuck on automatic. We've got a timeout in Jacksonville. Adam Zucker in New York with a tournament update. It's easy to play early when you have coffee. Amir Coffee, three of the go for six first half threes. Richard Pitino's team by five over Louisville at the break. Second half about to get underway on CBS as we go back to Ian, Jim, and Jamie. All right, Adam, thanks very much. Winner there will play the winner of Michigan State and Bradley. That will also be on CBS and part of the East region. This is also in that East bracket. Let's go back. This was called a shot clock violation, but it did Great. raise the rim ever so slightly. Yep. So what happened from the official standpoint? Well, on the right side, which you don't see that often, that's tough to get the ball to do just that. Because the whistle was blown, it goes to, while the ball was, you know, it was free, nobody had possession when the whistle was blown, it goes to the uh, possession arrow. So Yale gets possession of it, although it looked like LSU was gonna get an offensive rebound. I agree. Oni, kick. Two-man game with Copeland. Oni, short. Nice work there on the glass, though, by Bruner. So another offensive board for Bruner and a reload here for the Bulldogs. Oni, left hand, knocked around to the outside. Waters hits the cutter. Mays one on one. Wow. Oh, the Euro! Major <laughs> highlight, Skyler Mays. Wow, that was a disappearing act in terms of going right at somebody. LSU really on a roll right now in terms of the feel that they have and fixing it up. They need it. Swain off the mark, rebound to Williams. A selective transition too, isn't it? Look at this one now. Mays had it denied on the inside by Atkinson. Loose ball, out of bounds. Yale takes over. So you try to get your body defensively in front of somebody to stop them from coming to the basket. Not a bad job there, but man, did Swain really try to take a guess that he was gonna go left instead of right. I'd be smiling too. Lyra Mays. Baton Rouge, Louisiana native, Skyler Mays. One year at Finley Prep. Excellent going to his left. Outstanding role player for this LSU squad, averaging 13 and a half points per game. Yale has just four points in the last six minutes and 45 seconds. They trail by 14. Well, the middle of the floor has been closed down, and they're not hitting outside shots. Oh, pretty. Paul Atkinson, Jr., with a nifty play underneath. Yeah, that's why he's such a leader in field goal percentage in the NCAA stats this year. His low game, his post-up game, very efficient. He is shooting it at 70% yeah, from the field. They need to stop badly, Yale does right now. Williams flings it to, towards the rim. Count it at a foul. It is Emmett Williams heading to the free throw line. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Scores, highlights, latest NCAA tournament news. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Foul on Atkinson, his first. It's not a smooth delivery, but it's a little bit of a bump. He loses just a little bit of his control of his body, but right at the top, he gathers and gets under control with it. The last Ivy League team that LSU played was Cornell back in 1995, and they beat the Big Red 70 to 60. Couple of possessions Yale needs right now to get this round 10 at the half. And LSU is looking to push it towards 18 if they can. Yale down by 14. Atkinson wow. knocked there. away at a turnover. Yeah, a little bit of a force. Well defended on the high-low attempt by Yale. LSU is top 10 in the country in steals, number 8 at 9.1 per game. Williams works it inside, and it goes down on the flip. They just can't stop the power game that they're being shown by LSU. It's, and it's just not one or two guys, but it's everybody. Even the guards are playing power drives. Nice looking delivery, Alex Copeland. And, and it's a way they look up the Caught by Williams, 35 seconds left. Oh, he put some English on it. Tremont Waters working his way to the rim. 13 for Waters. 
New Mexico State Auburn is coming up on TNT, bottom of the hour. We are winding down in the first half here in Jacksonville, 15 seconds to go. LSU up by 16 on Yale. 26 points in the paint for the Tigers. Copeland makes his move, five seconds. Copeland on a kick. Bruner a three, air ball. That ball had eyes for a moment. Eyes at half court, I thought, well, this is close, and it's getting closer. Strong wow. offensive showing by LSU, triggered by Tremont Waters. Just so tricky with the basketball. I love that little look away pass going to his left. There's one with his left hand, finding the open shooters. Little hesitation in the delivery by himself. A very nice, efficient half for Waters. Jamie standing by with Tony Benford. Coach, you've played this game at the speed in which you like, but what has to say about the composure you've had in the half-court offense? Well, I thought our guys did a great job. We talk about paint touches all the time, and, and we did a great job attacking the paint, and we got to keep doing that. But well, we got to get stops in order to do that. We got to get stops, and then we want to push them in transition, put a lot of pressure on them, and then we got to get back in transition and the transition defense and get stops and, and keep those guys in front and then finish them with rebounds. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. All right, Jamie, LSU shoots 58% from the field in the first half. They hold Yale to 29%. End of the first half, and it's all LSU, 45-29. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. At halftime, LSU leads Yale 45-29. to Real questions, real answers. Join Bleacher Report's Taylor Rooks as she interviews the world's most exciting athletes and celebrities. Take it there with Taylor Rooks, premiering Wednesday, April 3rd on the BR app. Second half action coming up. Tremont Waters leading the Tigers with a double-digit advantage at the break. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Lexus, you're invited to an exceptionally crafted experience. Zaxby's, chicken fingers and buffalo wings. Zaxby's.com. And by Expedia, everything you need to go. Second half action here in Jacksonville. We check out the Dove Men's Plus Care first half stats with LSU in front, 45 to 29. Shot it well from both two point territory and three point territory and also control the paint. Welcome back, courtside, everybody. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarkle, Jamie Erdahl, the rest of our crew here on True TV. The size and strength yeah. of LSU has dominated Yale so far. Yeah, the first four minutes when they defensively blocked a few shots, yeah. I thought there was like a little bit of a hesitation by Yale. Let's call it that. They didn't shoot the ball well from no. the outside either, and that's not being muscled. You're just not making shots three of 17. But what LSU did very, very well, they looked at Oni and they said, well, he gets 18 points a game. We're going to make sure we take him out of his rhythm. They forced some shots. They're on the right side of his body. And here's perfect LSU basketball. Defensively, they get a little trigger. They get the block. And then off to the races, they go for the finish for Mays. Very well done. Before we start the second half, we check in with Jimmy Erdahl. Jimmy? Well, unfortunately, Yale was unable to find that magic bean that adds a couple inches and a couple pounds to combat LSU size during halftime. But head coach James Jones told me that they're just going to have to work on that help side defense and getting in the paint. Also, force LSU to take more threes. That is their chance. He was happy with their shot selection in the first half. He said, we got good looks. They just need to drop for us. Now, Jamie, LSU number one in the SEC in offensive rebounding this year. Ninth in the country. We saw that a number of times in the first half. They had seven offensive boards. Yeah, to Jamie's point, they only shoot 32% from the three point strike. Wow, oh, look at this. Oh. Ankle breaker from Waters. And a foul called as Big B Williams was hit. And Big B Williams knows that would have been on every highlight reel across the country if it goes down. That would have been. And then also the follow for the opportunity upstairs. There's just a good example of the quickness of the guards and the length and strength of the bigs. Second foul on Blake Reynolds. 
Once again, LSU doesn't put anybody right the along the lane for the free throws of Cavell Bigby Williams. Bigby Williams was discovered when he attended one of Luol Deng's basketball camps overseas and eventually made his way to the United States. Stops at Oregon, a JUCO prior to that, Gillette College in Wyoming. Looked like he was going to attend Montana State. Didn't happen. Fills wow. it inside. He went down hard, and a foul was called. So we'll take a look right here. You see Mays coming across. He takes a little shot to the face, possibly, it looks like. Mays is still out there. Bigby Williams is called on the foul, and Trey Fills, 66% shooter, will shoot a pair. Now we mentioned that Yale pulled off the upset of Baylor in the 2016 NCAA tournament. Trey Fills was a part of that team, as was Alex Copeland and Blake Reynolds, but they were more bit players. So the ownership and the leadership here as seniors of this group winning the Ivy League tournament title in the victory over Harvard and trying to blaze their own path here in the NCAA tournament right now down by 14 to LSU. Well, that may have been part of the halftime message by James Jones, too, to his seniors. Say, hey, listen, guys, forget about that first half. We go 20 minutes to get ourselves untracked, play a little bit more aggressively, and just play freely. Waters on a kick. Reed, extra feed. Mays, a three. Beautiful ball movement by the Tigers, and it leads to a trifecta. See, and that, that is clearly LSU offensive basketball in terms of when guys release the basketball, they have the ability to drive by stuff, people. But when you think about Reed, stepping out at 6'10 and really exiting the basketball. It's just a great setup that they can do. They move the basketball nice diagonal, and here's Reed's pass to the corner. Smooth, you know, smooth offensive execution and shot from the corner. Yale has missed their last 10 three-point attempts in this game. Reynolds trying to work that baseline. It's cleared by Big B. Williams. Waters off to the races, squeezes through a hole. They just continue to look to put the pressure on you off the, off the dribble, especially Waters. He just carries himself like an experienced player. He's only a sophomore. Nasri draws two defenders. Seven to shoot. Reed puts it on the deck. And a foul is called on his way to the rim. Watch every game live on your phone, tablet, computer, and favorite streaming device with March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. Foul on Reynolds. That's number three. And he's forced to the bench. It'll be Atkinson checking in. Reed is a 74% shooter. The jump shot has certainly improved over the course of the year. He's got stretch four potential. And a mobile big man with a 7-4 wingspan. Yeah, that's the fun part of watching him play. He can mix it up both inside, where he's very, very powerful, good hands, catches the basketball. He can pass out of the post area, and he can step away and shoot the ball from long range, like we saw earlier in this game. So, Jimmy, LSU made its first six free throws, then missed their next six before Reed just connected on that last one, 49-31 LSU. We're just not getting anywhere from the perimeter. Oney's been held in check. Yeah, they're just shutting him down big time. Taylor's doing a nice job defensively. He is one of seven from the field. Copeland gives it up. And that was tipped out of bounds with six to shoot. Yale retains. Yale likes to set up backdoor cuts also. Just can't get anything on their spread offense right now. The Bulldogs played the fastest tempo in the Ivy League, but this has been a different level. Oni steps through, and misses on the flip. Tip goes Bruner. Well, Oni was working there again. You notice that they did not, with five seconds left in the shot clock, give him any space at all. Waters comes up short, rebound, ripped down by Bruner. Not a bad time to get a good shot, get some points out of it if you're Yale. It's Copeland, and he's on target. Smart. Smart, don't come in real, go fast, get to a position on the floor, then get yourself under control. Nice little 15-foot pull-up. 
A 1,000 point score at Yale. Alex Copeland, 29th player to do it in program history. And LSU has taken a timeout. Yale trying to go on a run here. Yeah, and I like the LSU timeout too because they felt that Yale for the first time in this game was building a little confidence. Here's the step through, offensive glass. Not many of them, but they'll take that. And then we get a look at Copeland coming down. And once again, LSU does not want to let them get any confidence and get a roll going. Just happened, Whale. Pick up a pepperoni stuffed pizzone. That's right, people. It's back. Now part of the $5 lineup from Pizza Hut. Official pizza of March Madness. Yale and LSU have met just one other time. It was back in 1969, and Pistol Pete Maravich led LSU with 34 points. But the Yale Bulldogs pulled out a 97-94 win in the Rainbow Classic out in Hawaii. Jim Morgan led the way with 35 points, and there is Jim with some of his teammates. Jim wearing the glasses. Sixth leading scorer in Yale history. And more with Jamie Erdahl. Yeah, there's five members of that team that actually made the trip to Jacksonville, and I asked to regale me with some stories about playing Pete Maravich. They said he was just amazing. He had a distinct ability that when Yale took a shot, he would scream, here I am, here I am, as if he wanted to get the ball down the court fastest to get that shot up. But they still held him, as they say, to just 34 points, which is remarkable when you consider Pistol Pete Maravich. Yeah, no doubt. Jim, you played against Pistol okay. Pete in the NBA. Yeah, he had his way with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that on the right. You know what? Yale shut him down because Pete put up some big time yeah. numbers. 40, him. 40 plus on average over a three year career. Held him to 34. <laughs> I would take that. <laughs> a block there for Yale to set them up on the offensive end, trailing by 14. Copeland, high Archer goes. Alex Copeland is catching fire. One thing Copeland does very, very well is he plants that left foot as he's coming off his dribble, hits the ball down quickly, and then hits that left foot to get up with his elevation to go over shoot, uh, defenders. He has got 12 to lead the Bulldogs, and it's 49-37 LSU. Spin by Waters, the flip, in and out. So you have a little door opener. This is what LSU, why they called the timeout about a minute ago. They were worried about this, and there's the strip the other way. Bills tried to spin, and Waters was there defensively. Reed all the way for two in the foul. And as you turn it over at one end of the floor, that is exactly what LSU is looking to do, to keep pushing. And they push not only with the guards, but they push with the big guy. Reed at 6'10", leading the break. is introducing new orange vanilla coke it's orange and vanilla and coke and it's delicious you'll love it second half action here in jacksonville little run from yale but lsu has answered 51 37 and the tigers lead the bulldogs with 15 42 to go in regulation you know, one of the things that's glaring so far for yale is they just cannot get into their offense they have four assists they average 17 on the season and they also have five turnovers, so four assists versus five turnovers, not Yale basketball. Oh, not at all. They were ninth in the country entering action today in assist-to-turnover ratio. The miss by Reed and Mie Oni, the Ivy League Player of the Year, is one of eight from the field. Swain back on the floor for Yale. Oni misses from the outside, rebounded by Mays. And that's 11 misses in a row from three-point territory for Yale. Reed, the drop step, forced to give it up. And it's stolen by Oni. Nice pass. Ahead. Copeland streaks in for two. The finger roll. Hey, Copeland's got some game. There's no question about that. He's really challenging off the dribble in a lot of different ways. We saw him with the 15-foot pull-up jump shot. And there he is in transition. Nice help, too, by the way, Yale on the weak side to get that transition going. Javante smart to the hoop. Missed it. With a running one-hander, tracked down by Swain. Look to your left. Up ahead. Oni down the middle, challenges, missed it with the left hand. The follow, good, and one. Jordan Bruner banks it home. So we've seen two defensive stops in a row by Yale. Helping one another out, awareness of where the basketball is, and then the push. Get the ball out of your hands, and Copeland with a terrific finish going across from the left side to the right. 
and then all of a sudden you get a couple of free throws and maybe all of a sudden you start to believe in yourself if you're Yale and I think it's starting to go in that direction. First foul called on Skylar Mays. Jordan Bruner had some big name offers including Clemson coming out of Spring Valley High School. His sister Ashley played at South Carolina then professionally in Portugal. This is at the free throw line, so it's a 10-point lead for LSU, but it's a 10-2 run for Yale. See if they can keep Waters out of the lane. Very important for Yale to keep him away from getting it, di dictating what he wants to do with the basketball. Emmett Williams is back in Darius Days. And a little bigger to reach. Atkinson with the reach. And it looked like... Mays was injured on the play. He is in some pain grabbing that right hand. Atkinson picks up his third foul. You know, a lot of times when you make that move, you get a kind of like a jam to your fingers and your hand. And watch when he crosses, and right there, that's when Atkinson comes down on him. It's a little bit of a chop across the right hand. Left got hit a little bit too, but mostly the right. Skyler Mays, 85% free throw shooter, and he bangs in the first. So you have a good help there with Atkinson. Instead of just staying and being big, as he is at 6'10", you put your hands down, they come swiping down. That's the easy call for yeah. an official just there. Just use your body, stay in the way, and stand up strong. He keeps cracking his knuckles as if that's going to make the pain go away, <laughs> but you're just looking for some relief. Yeah, and sometimes you want to pull those fingers out, actually, if you get them jammed. Amazing, some yes. obvious pain there. Right. You get hit by a big guy like that, he gets your attention. Look at the pressure on the perimeter right now. Trying to take them out of an offensive set. A lot of pick and rolls, screens for Copeland. Austin Williams is in for Yale off the ricochet. It's intercepted by Smart. Smart gets it ahead. Nice look for Waters. And they back it out with 13.55 to go, second half. 12-point lead for LSU. Mays has Williams on the outside. Waters catch and fire oh. wow. off the side of the backboard. They're looking to push, aren't they? Watch from behind. Only the lob upstairs. The catch made by Bruner and the save for Swain. And Yale has to go back, Ian, just to making simple passes. Don't try to make the fancy pass. Copeland, crossover kick, Bruner, short. And the rebound floats into the hands of Big B Williams. They don't make the shot, they don't get any points out of it, but better second part of that possession. Mays to the cup, reverse, no. Knocked to the outside, Swain's got it for Yale. It numbers again. Right down the middle, Swain, the push shot goes. They're reading the play very well, and if they just stay to the basics like Yale usually does. The speed of water stripped to the ball. Nice work. Beautiful nice play. fly, Beautiful but Yale play. controls. Here he is, three-point shooter. Swain missed it from the outside. That was a three-on-four <laughs> for Yale. Two Yale players were down in the backcourt, and that's 12 straight misses now from three-point territory for the Bulldogs. It's really today's game, isn't it? You have an open three, you, Take you it. don't have the numbers, especially with a good shooter. It's like a, a decade-long green light. Smart floater rims in. Javante Smart, 6'4", versatile, and all the physical tools as a freshman for LSU. And in the last five games, averaging 19 points a game, so clearly giving them a big-time lift offensively. Oney kicks it out. A three, Alex Copeland, bullseye. And you have to give credit to Oni. He's been struggling from the floor, not shooting the ball well. One of ten, but there, a release pass. Third Six. assist for him. 17 for Copeland. 15-6 run for Yale. 55-46 LSU. Oh, oh pretty boy. fake. Smart protects. He missed it. Caught by Big B Williams, and the lefty lays it in. Smart obviously trying to make that shot, but key for him to get it up on the glass so one of his teammates could go after it. Sometimes you just got to put it up there and set the table. Ten points, ten rebounds for Bigby Williams and a kick. Back to a double-digit lead for LSU, and we get a timeout. Eleven and a half to go here, second half. So Swain with double-digit points already with ten, doing a 
Nice work off the glass, but LSU comes back. Smart puts it up off the glass. And the bigs go to work again on the offensive glass. To one point, as we go back to I and Jim and Jamie. All right, Adam, thanks very much. Auburn, Mexico State winner there advances to Saturday to meet the winner of Kansas and Northeastern. The action of those games over on TNT. 57-46, LSU leads it to three seed in the East. Swain out of the timeout, in and out for Yale from three-point territory. Yeah, they go to a guy who shoots the ball very well from the three-point stripe, 42%, but that's what he's known for. LSU shot it at 60% in the first half. They are at 33% here in the second half, leaving the door open for Yale. 57-46, Tigers. A little mismatch here on the left side. Smart, big shot, no. Reynolds grabs it in a crowd. He had to reach for that one, too, because he had to first defend and then get back on the glass. Copeland trying to break somebody down here. Yeah, ball on a string. Copeland misses the rainbow delivery. And Reed handles it for the defensive rebound. Tremont Waters, big first half for LSU. Waters, off balance, delivery, no. And Reynolds has got it for Yale. He's got his work cut out for him, too, trying to keep the LSU Tigers off the glass. Oney lost it going to the rim. And it's knocked out of bounds off of LSU. So Yale retains. The impractical jokers are back with challenges and punishments like you've never seen before. Watch a new episode next Thursday at 10, 9 central here on True TV. Paul Atkinson Jr. back in. He'll get a touch. <laughs> nice positioning and a chance for three. You know what I liked about that play too, Ion? It was the setup. A little bit of a delay. You get the entry pass to the right side of the floor. And then watch the middle of the floor. So he's going to just come back here, catch the basketball. They isolate him one on one. But the positioning of his body was absolutely perfect against Bigby Williams, who had a few good blocks in the first half. And that's his third foul. And he will head to the LSU bench. A double double for Bigby Williams 10 points, 10 boards. But now in spectator mode, 10 24 to play here in the second half. And what does that do to the mindset of L uh, of Yale right now with him exiting, with his presence underneath, with him blocking shots this afternoon? I'd start to drive it a little bit. If you have to kick it, fine, but drive it as much as you can. It is 18-8 Yale over the last seven minutes. They have cut it to eight. A double team, get him to release the ball. Working around the perimeter, Good smart. Hand. Ripped away by Copeland! And a foul called as he was rushing towards the midcourt area. Yeah, I think they got Smart from behind after he lost the ball. And that's number two on Smart. Tony Benford's squad had a big lead that is beginning to shrink. And Yale has been gritty. Yeah, does he just reach out here and stop him? Let's see if he goes for the ball. Well, it looked like he was going to the ball. A little review going on right now. Chris Rastatter over there with Nathan Farrell. Yeah, they're going to check to see if this is any kind of flagrant foul. Yeah, I, I see the the common foul. Yeah. I, I, maybe they thought that hand there pulled back a little bit and grabbed and pulled him and did not allow him to go up the court. I didn't see one. And those reactions often, not only is he trying to keep Copeland from advancing the ball, it's also frustration sure. after losing the ball yourself. Yeah, and you could do that. If you're smart from behind, you say, oh, I just lost it. I'm going to grab. Like right now, I'm going to reach out. He grabbed yeah, the he shorts. He grabbed the shorts a little yeah. bit there. Okay, good catch. Our rules analyst, Gene Steratore, watching from New York. What would you see there, Gene? It's a real good catch, and what they're going to try to determine right now is even though that feels like a subtle grab on the shorts, if that takes a step away and that's not and that's not judged to be a basketball related play, it's kind of a breakaway feel, even though we're back far in the backcourt, they'll upgrade that to an F1 and he does take a step away, guys. In my opinion, I would upgrade that yeah. to a flagrant one and by Gene, its category. Gene, Gene that's been confirmed yeah. right on the money. Gene, good call. It's tricky there, isn't it? Yeah, he got yeah, it. I mean, it, it clearly. And you know, when you watch it there, it's more of a hold than I, you you'd initially thought. He really had a pretty good grip on it and closed the fist. Chris Rastatter just came over and confirmed it. So it is a flagrant one. And they're now explaining to Javante Smart 
why the call was made. The nod from Smart and Copeland, who was an 84% free throw shooter, heads to the line with 10.08 to play in this second half. Eight point game. I think it's easy being an official out there, huh? I, I do not. <laughs> no, I've don't. never said that on the record. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a tough job. And that was a great catch by the officials just then. Copeland misses on the first. We could officiate you and me. Really? <laughs> when? Not Today? Very, Later? Not, not very well. <laughs> I could maybe work at Foot Locker if you give me the jersey. That's about it. Alex Copeland, Los Angeles native, out of Harvard Westlake, leads all scores with 18. And how big a play is this, too? I mean, they get the, they get the, the uh, free throw, but now all of a sudden possession, down seven, confidence. Everything's shifting towards Yale right now. Swain looks down low. Reynolds off the double team. They want to stay with Swain if they can defensively. Wow, that's a slow shot, and he ate it up. Oney had it blocked by Williams. That is five blocks for LSU today. Yale controls with 12 to shoot, and it has been a frustrating day for Mie Oney. This is a tough spot to get this ball in bounds. They got to be careful with this. The junior from Northridge, yeah, California, coughs it up. Jimmy, you called it. Well, that's just the, you know the corner is just you can't do anything with it. Look at this. Smart untouch going to the rim. Well, you get a possession, you get a block shot if you're Yale, and then you have the toughest, really the toughest entry point on the floor. And what does LSU do? They not only eat it up defensively, but they eat it up at the offensive end also. Reynolds. For Oni. Down the middle. Nice shovel for the two handed slam. Paul Atkinson. And Oni at only one for 11 is coming at you. Wow, straight away. Nas Reed missed it. He gets it back. Ball deflected by Atkinson. He's been an impact player for Yale. And watch the drive with the purpose. Come around the corner and make something happen with it. Nice little handoff and finish for Atkinson. Mistake two by Yale when that big. Reed took that long shot iron. Reynolds drifted towards yeah. half court, and the ball came kicking right back out. If he just stayed in front of him, turns around, he scoops up the ball off the floor. Jordan Bruner back in. He replaces Paul Atkinson, Jr. LSU triggers it. Right now, Waters getting some rest. Oh, the wraparound lay-in. Skyler Mays hangs and hits. Well, his delay was perfectly timed because a Yale defender had a double team on the baseline. He ran to the corner. Mays just picked it apart. Reynolds misses from the outside. 61-52 LSU under nine minutes to play. Mays gives it up. Good handoff there. Good no shot by Reed. Play called out by Tony Benford, the interim coach, stepping in for Will Wade. Mays, cross, kick. There's the post up. Reed, shot clock winding down. Contact, it's an offensive foul. And Reynolds defensively just then, understanding the shot clock was working against LSU. You hold your position and hope that you can take that good position. Let's see if he stays straight up. Who creates the contact? Reed does. Second could, foul on Reed. Yeah, and you could slide a little bit in good defensive position. It's generally if you're sliding as a defender and you come in and create the contact is where the officials would call a block on that one. It was initiated by Reed. 61-52 LSU. Mieoni. Well, they're giving him the basketball. He's playing point. Nice pass. Bruner gives it up, and Reynolds a cut to the rim. All of a sudden, the middle of the floor is starting to open up for Yale offensively. That's twice in a row they brought it to the free throw line and had guys who are capable of making passing plays. First points of the day for Blake Reynolds. He averages 11 and a half per game. Jumper. Wow. Air ball. Reed catches it off the miss by Mays. Smart lines it up. A little hesitation out there, too, by Smart. Cost him, I think. And the rebound of Mieoni. Shooter. Deep one. Swain, too strong. Long rebound. Caught by Williams. And Williams put it down low. Deflected by Swain. And it's out of bounds. All right, we have the Yale fans over our right shoulder. And every time Swain touches it, you can sense that they wanted that shot to go in. But here's that ball moving in the middle of the floor. Yale starting to look pretty good at the offensive end.
Game summary here in Jacksonville, 61-54 LSU, the three seed in the East, leading 14th seed at Yale. Neither team has shot it well from long range, but Yale is four of 25. Alex Copeland, though, cool and calm, the senior for the Bulldogs. It's been the trigger point for them, no question about it, in a variety of ways in terms of making things happen. Just, I like the fact that he's been really going after it in the transition game. And so now if you're LSU, I think you come out of this break up seven at this point. I think you go to read on the blocks for one time. Jamie Erdahl monitoring the Yale huddle. Yeah, keep an eye on some quick defensive shifts for Yale. James Jones alluded to the fact that, hey, we confused them with a box in one a few possessions ago. Offensively, he said, just rely that those big shots will drop. They put it right inside to Reed, and he delivers. They haven't been going to him that much. That's why it was kind of a relatively easy call to get him the touches because he's also a very, very good passer from the blocks. And Waters is back in for LSU. Ten points for Reed. A good strip. A steal by Smart. Smart, the stop and go, leaves it inside. Bank shot, no good for Taylor. Out of bounds off of Yale. Might have got off Reynolds at the end just then. Well, the struggles for Mieoni, just three points. Meanwhile, Tremont Waters had the big first half, 13 points, has not scored for LSU in the second half. If you combine Reynolds and Oni's numbers, they are two of 19. For a shot clock for LSU. Atkinson back in for Yale. Nas Reed, 15 to shoot. Smart on a switch. Look at the clock a bit. Two-man game. Smart lines it up. Off the rim. Smart will save it. But it's out of bounds. Williams couldn't oh, secure it. Oh, going. Williams goes over the scores table. And will get helped up. And I thought he was going to stop here when he got to the table. I think he did and as well. And then all of a sudden he kept Definitely knocked some wires out. There is a local radio setup in that area. Oh, yeah, there's major there's spillage. spillage too. Uh, oh, a double, double, double spill, triple. triple. I've never seen it in all my years. Triple spillage. It's great in slow motion, isn't it? Um, as long as you're not in Fair. the middle of it. <laughs> Wow, and that is the Belmont radio setup, <laughs> and that shirt oh, heard, uh, yeah, is done. Oh boy. I think he jammed his left arm also. And Belmont Radio is just trying to get ready for game two. And they get this right in their lap. Emmett Williams. Yeah, look back. You knocked out the radio, guys. His shirt is covered with whatever that was they were drinking also. Uh, that, oh, look at this. Oof. Long afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Bring in the tech guy. You have an extra shirt, Jimmy. I know you brought one. I did. You want to offer Looks it like up? It might fit that guy too. Jumper doesn't go for Oni. Yeah, would not expect him to quit firing when they come down the floor. They are four of 26 from three-point land. And they, on the season, shoot it at 37% on average. And the blocks were pretty good with Reed. I don't know why they're not going to just test it one more time with him. Under six minutes to play. Smart the dribble drive. Nice help defensively by Bruner. And he comes away with the block for the Bulldogs. Get somebody leaning out on a pass. Maybe look for a backdoor cut if you yell. Copeland's been the go-to guy. They double team again, and they got it away from again. He couldn't split defenders. He turns it over. Ninth turnover for Yale. Smart. Open look at a three. In and out. Rebound. Out of bounds off of LSU. UEFA Champions League is heating up stream on BR Live or watch on TNT. The quarterfinal round continues April 9th. Skyler Mays is back in. So is Bigby Williams for LSU. 5.22 to go. Yale has gone nearly three minutes without a point, but they're still in it. Foul is called. Oni trying to take it to the rim. Taking a peek at the team fouls, and LSU now with six. So the next one will put Yale 
in the bonus. Yeah, so the driving, you have to be careful again because the shot blocker is back on the floor. At this point of the game, I think you still have to challenge and go after him. Nice pass to the middle. Atkinson, no. Tiffin won't go for Bruner. Had the initial pass where they wanted it to, but the shot blocker forced him to drift just a little bit out of the paint. Waters watched by Swain on the outside. Five minutes to play. Switch. Big, big, big e. Williams has a mismatch down there, but they've gotten it back. He still does. Reed lets it fly. No good on a three and over the back. That'll be team foul number seven and the fourth personal on Big B Williams. That was that mismatch I just mentioned, Diane. And Swain, of all people, were down there at six feet tall. He did a perfect job of moving Big B Williams away just enough to get that foul. Not a good feeling when you're the six-footer here and the shot's gonna kick off and look what he does He keeps his distance keeps his body flush against the larger guy and taller guy and makes it work out So Big B Williams to the bench Emmett Williams in Azar Swain At the line and that opens up that driving lane a little bit more for Yale also with him on the bench Big B Williams Azar Swain has not been shy today coming off the bench. He's three of eight from the field, two of seven from three-point territory. And he connects on a pair. A tenth game this year in double figures at 15 against Harvard last time out. So he's he's comfortable looking to score. And they switch him to the point guard position defensively right now against Waters. This will be an interesting matchup. Swain now with 12 points. Blake Reynolds is back in. LSU has gone two and a half minutes without a point. And Swain just has to keep Waters away from the middle of the floor. They run a set out front, Waters. And here's the switch, small against big, which favors LSU against Atkinson. Swain looking for help. They switch out of it, but the open lane leaves Williams free for a major throwdown. Yeah, and I don't think you can really, if you're Yale, you can't switch a, a big guy to play Waters like that, he'll pick you apart as he just did. 36 points in the paint, LSU up by nine. We approach four minutes to play. Copeland trying to probe against Mays. Copeland launches off the rim. It was online, but too strong. LSU in no hurry. 65-56, the Tigers lead it. And Yale is now 4 of 27 from beyond the arc. Waters uses the screen. Wow, where's that going? Now that was a hot pass out of bounds. He was trying to hit Taylor. So here's a little small versus big, and he just sets the table perfectly for Williams. Well executed when they needed a bucket. This has been an emotional season for the LSU Tigers. Wade Sims, a junior member of the basketball team, was shot and killed in September. When we spoke with Tony Benford about Sims and what he meant to the team, he said the season's dedicated to him. That's been the theme throughout. There's a built-in brotherhood with this squad for what Sims meant to his teammates. Sims played high school basketball with Skylar Mays and Marshall Graves. His father, Wayne, played at LSU from 87 to 91. So if you talk about LSU facing adversity, they believe that there's nothing that's going to approach what they experienced back in September and how close this group has become. They lead this one 65 to 56. Reynolds out of a timeout with a jump hook for Yale. So it's a nice little set there, nothing really fancy, an isolation drop down. And they're hoping, as they did, to get the two, two points on that, make it a three-possession game, and try to get a stop. Yeah. Looking, could look into the post again with Reed. Reed out of the post. Emmett Williams gets it back. And now Waters, eight to shoot, three minutes to play. Waters on a switch, he's got Reynolds. Waters, step back three, too strong. And rebounded by Oni. Seven point game with 2.52 to go. To the rim, layup doesn't go for Bruner. 
Well, he came in and took oh, it right away. he took it away from Mays, and Bruner lays it in. <laughs> go if at first you don't succeed. <laughs> wow, go figure on that one. How did he pull that one off? Little magic act. 65 to 60. Blake Reynolds just pulled a David Copperfield. And it was a huge play also. Brings them within five. Still plenty of time in this ball game, up to two and a half minutes. Waters, mismatch, drive and kick. Waters not looking to shoot initially. Cups the ball, throws it up, doesn't go. Reed gobbles it up inside for two. Just the ability of Waters to go by Reynolds, who played him pretty well defensively that trip, but then Reed understanding that shot's going to eventually get up on the glass and he's too strong to take him away. We are under two minutes to play. LSU 67, Yale 60, Oni off the mark from three-point territory. It just has not been his day. One of 13. And now they're going to just squeeze the clock right now. Takes them off. The time off the clock. Good just little delay here. Mays oh. cuts to the rim. Rejected, but a foul. Reynolds gets called for it. Yeah, good answer by Reynolds. No other choice but try to stop that ball from going through the hoop. And how about the curl by Waters going around the baseline here and just waiting. They really understand well how to time going towards it. And here comes that miss. And look at Bruner's going to come back into this play and just not quitting on it. Mays misses at the line. Seven point lead for LSU. 133 left. So here's that layup down the middle of the floor, and he finishes that off to give them a big bucket. One out of two for Skyler Mays. Yale has missed 20 of its last 21 three pointers. They trail by eight. Keep going to the hoop. No! no! Big finish! Mie Oni <laughs> takes the imaginary ladder. Wow, did he ever crash that one through? We've seen two power dunks in this game, one by Reed and one by Oni gets around the corner and just finishes it off to keep some life with Yale. Reminder, you have a rug. I heard rug. A rug typically does not extend over an entire floor. Flour is most commonly used in making bread. Brad, would you like me to call Brad? Calling Brad. Calling Brett. Calling Brenda. There's enough artificial in the world. Who is this? Michelob Ultra. No artificial colors or flavors. Superior light beer. I heard rug. Game reset with 1.25 on the clock. Each team has two timeouts remaining. Yale still has a foul to give. Possession arrow, if it comes into play here, does favor Yale. LSU has the ball and the lead, 68-62 in Jacksonville. The winner here will play the winner of Maryland Belmont. That is next here on True TV. So I think that foul to give is really an important one right now for Yale, I that you mentioned, because they can really be very aggressive with their defensive stances, take some chances if they want. They don't want to just deliberately foul right now. I'm not suggesting that, but they could be overly aggressive, and if they get in trouble, they could reach out and foul and, and stop an easy layup. They handle the pressure. Waters in attack mode. Wow. Rejected. Bruder steps in for the block. Kick. Swain blocked nice. on the outside by Mays. Controlled by Yale. The jumper doesn't go as Oni missed it from three-point land. They had their opportunities. Well, they have to give up one foul at least right here. This is a Yale team that has shot 37% from three-point range this season, but it has not been part of the arsenal today. So the big step in by Bruner just ends, because that's going to be a little bit of a floater going to the basket where they're very effective with it. Yale is 4 of 30 overall from three. LSU 68, Yale 62. 101 on the clock. They get it in cleanly to Waters. Yeah, they want to play aggressively close to the point where they may have to start fouling. But now you, if this is situation, three on two here. Smart. Yep, middle of the floor. Hits the floater. Eight point lead for LSU. Swain 
gives it up to Copeland. They need a three. Copeland lines it up. Bottom. Five-point game with 41.8 to play. Yale is still alive. LSU is trying to get to the finish line in the East region. LSU 70, Yale 65. This is the 314 matchup in the East region, Jacksonville, Florida. LSU with the basketball and 41.8 left on the clock. And this is where the possession arrow be becomes a factor too, Ian. When you're double teaming, you're looking for a fouling situation right now. Just don't take a swipe. Go in and try to double team or double team the ball, but also go in with your hands trying to catch up to the basketball. Uh oh, oh Reed got popped. Yeah. Let's see. Not quick enough to get to him. This LSU guard trio is very, very good at shooting free throws. Reed at 74, and there comes that little flip of the hand. Yeah, it's the basketball. Yeah. And Nas Reed was checking the left eye. I mean, clearly a shorter guy trying to get up to get the ball up high. And yeah, that was a serious yeah. recoil from Nas Reed. He is one of three at the line today. Twelve points, ten rebounds for Reed. Reynolds in, Atkinson sits. Seventy-four percent shooter. It's a six-point LSU lead. So a two or three possession game, Yale's message is to come down the floor and look for the quick hitter. This is an LSU team that got to as high as nine in the nation this year. And they have a seven point advantage. Ball fake. Bruner, a rainbow three for Yale. Now you're into the fouling mode. Well, after the break. 72-68. LSU, 30.9 on the clock. The Bulldogs are not going away. Let's flash back. 2016, first round in Providence. Yale against Baylor. First NCAA tournament appearance for the Bulldogs since 62. Makai Mason, 31 points to lead the way. Yale, a 79-75 win. The program's only NCAA tournament win. Ironically, Mason is now a member of the Baylor Bears, who take on Syracuse in Salt Lake City later today. Yeah, one of the things with LSU, you have Waters on the floor, you have Mays. You have to foul him, but he's a very, very good free throw shooter at 86% or 80%. And Tremont Waters took a shot to the eye. Yale is out of timeouts. And Waters is headed to the strike. Yes, yeah, see, and they put Waters in the game, obviously, keep him in there in situations. And they have Smart and they have Mays, all terrific free throw shooters. And here's the kind of looking to try to reach in to grab the ball. And it yeah, looks like they, they just might have connected heads there. Waters hits. 73 68, LSU, 29.5 to play. LSU's losses this season came to Florida State, Oklahoma State, Houston, Arkansas, and Florida twice. Same message, get it down the floor and look for your quick hitter. You can turn a corner and go to the basket, if not step back. Only lines it up. Just not his day. Off the back of the iron, and a foul given. Javante Smart will head to the line. And Yale with 20 seconds left in a six-point hole. And only with a good look just then, too. He's one for nine from the three-point line, two for 15 from the floor overall. A Yale team that went 22 and seven this year, 10 and four in the Ivy League. But they are on the doorstep of getting knocked out in the first round by LSU, the three seed in the East. And what a positive to have three guys on the floor who shoot the basketball at 80% or better. And it's smart at 85. One out of two, seven point game, 15 seconds left. Copeland hunts down the three, connects. State of the game. 
24 for Alex Copeland. No choice but the foul. 12.7 on the clock, and this time it'll be Skyler Mays heading to the line. Yeah, who's at 86%. So LSU is doing everything correct in terms of who's catching the basketball and the entry passes as Copeland goes up over the top and buries that long-range shot. Skyler Mays, the junior. Double bonus here, two shots for Mays. They were having a yeah, that's scoreboard something, issue. Something's up. And they're pointing to the scoreboard. It indicates only 18 Eight. fouls. Right. But they are in the double bonus. He hits the first, so it's irrelevant. 76 71, 12.7 to play. One way to take the strategy away from Yale, isn't it? Yep. The fouling strategy, make your free throws. Get it ahead for Bruner. Ten seconds left. Bruner contested three. He's got it. 8.6. It's a one possession game and a foul given. Skyler Mays heads back to the line. They're going to have to sweat this one out. The only choice Yale has is to come down and look for a quick hitter. And Bruner goes upstairs, contended just a little bit, contested. So a touch of life for Yale also, but once again, at 86% at the line. And Mays is now 6 of 7 at the free throw line. He's got 18 points. Brings leadership to this team. Can bring the lead to 5, and does. Smooth. Smooth at the line. Get it in for Bruner. Pulls up. 5 seconds left. That one is off. Copeland misses at the horn. LSU moving on. If there are distractions, there were no signs of it today for the Tigers. The three seed in the East takes care of business. LSU over Yale, 79 to 74 to advance to the second round here in Jacksonville. So LSU will play on Saturday. Now they will wait the winner of Maryland and Belmont, which is coming up here on True TV. Yeah, I thought 35 minutes or so of very good basketball by LSU. And, you know, Yale didn't go away when they got down big in this game, came back and were fighting the entire way until the final buzzer. Just a little too much power in terms of up front strength. Mays with 19, Waters with 15, Reed scored 14. Big B Williams set the tone early with his defensive presence, and we send it over to Jamie Erdahl. Coach, Yale pushed you, they challenged you down the stretch, but what is to say about your team's composure at the finish there, especially separating? Well, I know Coach Jones, you know Yale, they're a really good ball, ball club, they, they really uh, attacked us late, and we didn't do a good job of getting to our uh, getting to our man and contestant shots, uh, but, but hey, I give my guys credit, we've been through reversing all year. I love these guys, and uh, they just stick together through, uh, we knew Yale was going to make a run, you know, it's a game of runs, and so our guys did a great job of stepping up to the line, making free throws, and uh, really proud of our guys. Speaking of the adversity you face, how does the moment feel now that you have that first NCAA tournament win under your belt? Well, it's great. Now we maybe relax a little bit and get ready to play. You know, this was huge. I think everybody was picking us to lose this one, but these guys really believe in one another. They've taken ownership of their team uh, from day one, and uh, I'm just really pleased with these guys, especially Skyler. Skyler made the job easy down the stretch for us. And I'm going to speak with him now, Coach. Thank you, Skyler. I'll ask you to join me now. How you doing? How's that finger? I just shook that hand. It's all right. I'm about to go look at it, see what's up with it. Is it hurting you pretty bad? Yeah, I'll be okay, though. All right. They challenged you down the stretch, but what separated the way that LSU was able to, especially in the second half? Uh, I think we did a great job getting the ball in the paint. And uh, I feel like the player of the game was Marlon Taylor. His defense on uh, Maya Oni, I, I can't say his name. Mia Oni. Mia, he's an unbelievable player, and Marlon did a tremendous job on him. So I'm just proud of him and, you know, surviving a dance. This is quite the moment for LSU. There's a lot of attention being paid to your program. How did you guys handle this moment and making sure you got through it together? Yeah, we just have to lace it up together and uh, come together at a time like this and uh, just play for each other like we've been doing all year. And that's what got us in this position. So we, we continue to do that. Great things are coming. Good luck with that finger. Thank you so much. <laughs>
All right, Jamie, the young man is pre-med, so he might be able to check out his finger <laughs> on his own. LSU with Tony Benford, the interim coach, stepping in for Will Wade. Benford, former head coach at North Texas, has his first NCAA tournament win as a head man. LSU knocks out Yale. Tournament games continue live on CBS, TNT, and TBS. Belmont, Maryland, coming up on True TV. We'll send you to our studio, Capital One, Tournament Central, right after these messages.